Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to St. Mary's Vicarage on this Friday, the 13th of November 2022. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Anyhow, it's lovely to be with you uh, this morning. Uh, sorry I couldn't be with you yesterday. Um, I had uh, um, uh, Zoom meetings all morning and uh, uh, another one in the evening, but I did escape yesterday afternoon and um, uh, took myself down to Studland. Uh, for a lovely uh, afternoon walk with camera, um, which was uh, great. The light was beautiful, so it was good to get some fresh air and exercise. But it's <coughs> very different from uh, the first lockdown because I uh, remember during the first lockdown, there were a couple of times that I had to sort of go a bit further afield than Handley because of my um, rural field officer role. And I sort of did get down to Chisel. Uh, well, Abbotsbury and that area and uh, and such like. And um, I remember sort of driving round Dorset then and um, the roads were virtually empty and all of the car parks that sort of you normally see with the beaches, they were all locked up and closed and nobody was around. Um, I remember walking um, along uh, or driving along um, Weymouth seafront uh, during lockdown uh, one um, when I had to go down there and just seeing sand blowing across the road and, and nobody there at all um, but that's all changed and um, I, I haven't really noticed a reduction in traffic at all um, and um, oh morning Paul lovely to see you uh, oh you've been furloughed again well I hope all's going well morning Peter um, so yes, but it, it, it's quite busy. I mean, as I say, I got down to Studland and um, I parked the uh, car at sort of um, uh, Knoll Beach, which some people will know is the sort of National Trust car park. Thankfully, they're open, which I have to say is good. And more importantly, they've kept the toilets open this time. Um, but uh, I wouldn't say the car park was full, but there were a lot of people around and... Um, uh, I think people who uh, maybe have been furloughed or whatever are taking the opportunity uh, to do exercise because I saw lots of people walking and cycling and um, anyhow that's probably no bad um, that's probably no bad thing um, getting fit uh, something I certainly um, need to do. There was a lot of uphill walking I did yesterday. Uh, I walked up to I think it's called um, Agles. Uh, Agglestone uh, or Agglestone Rock um, so that's quite a steep walk and then on the way back I decided I wanted to capture the sun setting on Corf Castle but I wanted to get up to a sort of a high viewpoint so I walked up to the top of that hill um, <coughs> um, I was uh, a bit out of breath by the time I got up there but I uh, felt I'd had a um, a good workout and such like so uh, anyhow uh, that was good because it um, uh, it certainly geared me up for uh, what was quite an important deanery meeting uh, last night the deanery planning uh, group who are looking at how the deanery will um, be reorganized and we had a very positive meeting which was good um, but I think getting out uh, and having good walk energized me a bit for um, for that. Um, however, just to say, if you are going out and about for a walk, uh, I see that Geeta's with us this morning. Um, just do be aware that cars uh, have been broken into. So if you, you know, if you're going anywhere and you're parking your car in a lay-by or, or somewhere, particularly if it's um, a bit secluded, um, just be aware that um, vehicles have been broken into and uh um uh it, it's you know i mean i don't know what to say to avoid those spots or just make sure you just leave absolutely nothing in the nothing in the vehicle at all um that that might encourage uh, these awful people to um uh to see what to smash a window but i i've had friends that have left the car looking virtually empty or empty and uh not round here but they've had their window broken too and then the glove compartment gone through and things. I do know some people that um, leave the glove compartment empty and when they uh, park their car, they deliberately leave it open and empty so 
um, people can see that um, there's nothing in it. But please do be aware of that if you're going out for a walk. And Geeta, very, very sorry to hear about um, your car being broken into. It's very upsetting when that um, uh, when that happens. But I hope it doesn't put you off uh, um, going for a going for a walk in this beautiful countryside because we we need that for our own um, uh, well-being. Um, I remember a few years ago I read about somebody that kept a um, a rattlesnake in their cars just in the States <laughs> uh, and that was their, uh, um, that, uh, he was obviously a snake handler but that was their, uh, um, that was their sort of um, anti-theft device which I think worked pretty well um, but there we go. Um, so yes, uh, lots happening. We also had uh, um, uh, a bit of sort of, I don't want to say sad, sad news, challenging news, worrying news yesterday. So um, our lovely Alex, who is at the Royal Academy of Music, um, <clears throat> he's had to go into self-isolation for two weeks now. Um, his entire course is only 12 people. It's, a, it's, it's quite a select uh, group of people. And um, <clears throat> they've been very, very lucky. And I think partly because they're such small numbers and that group of 12 are split into six. So only six can associate at, at, at any one time. Um, uh, so they've been very lucky and, and their course, which of course is quite a physical course because um, Royal Academy of Music, they're doing theatre, <coughs> uh, master an MA in theatre studies, musical studies. So they're learning to sing and they have to dance and everything like that. Uh, a little bit like the, the, <coughs> the couple on Strictly Come Dancing. Um, uh, Unfortunately, what happened uh, yesterday was that uh, um, one of their tutors and one of the other students um, had a positive um, COVID test. Um, and that has meant now that through the test and trace system, <laughs> good to know it's working. Unfortunately, that whole cohort of 12 have had to um, go into self-isolation. <clears throat> so um, uh, do hold them all in your prayers and Alex if you're friends with Alex on Facebook um, send him a message um, we're we're pleased in the sense that originally Alex was going to be sharing sort of uh, digs living in a house uh, in Acton was the original plan but unfortunately for one reason or another um, mainly finances that that wasn't possible but he was lucky enough to get um, a sort of part scholarship to a place called Good Enough College, which is um, round the back of the British Museum. And it's, uh, <clears throat> it, it's not a college as such, but it, it, it uh, provides accommodation for mature students who are doing um, masters and higher degrees. Um, and uh, I think because normally they supply rooms to foreign students who are studying here, but because there's a great shortage of foreign students, Alex was lucky enough to get this um, room. Uh, which is good for him because it meant, you know, there's a hall and he can go and dine and such like. But um, uh, in this instance, I think that's worked out quite well because what they have got is they've got uh, one side of the college that has got his room is not doesn't have an ensuite bathroom. He shares a shower area with, I think, about four or five other students and such like. <clears throat> However, they've moved him into a um, they've moved him into a ensuite room. Um, because he obviously can't share a shower while he's self-isolating. Uh, so he's moved all his stuff into there and um, uh, they will bring him, um, uh, they will bring food up to his room, which is good. And we discovered that while he's in uh, lockdown, <coughs> um, in isolation, he doesn't have to pay for his food. So it's a bit of a relief for Kate and I, in a sense, though worrying, we, <coughs> we don't know whether he's... Um, got the virus or not yet, uh, they, they've all been advised just to see what happens over the next few days and if they then develop any symptoms to then get a test. Um, but for now, they, they're all having to self, uh, self-isolate. self So, um, uh, yeah, it's a tricky thing, I think, if you're a young person and, and well, for anybody. And, uh, you know, he's he unfortunately, he's not allowed out. There doesn't seem to be any outdoor space that people in that... Um, establishment can actually go outside so he is literally confined to his room for <coughs> for two weeks so if you are a friend with him on Facebook uh, send him a few cheery um, cheery messages but uh, we shall see what happens and uh, thinking of all those people who are doing that and students who have had a difficult time uh, anyhow so that's that um, well some good news as far as I'm concerned this morning I, I heard on the news that um, 
uh, Mr. Cummings <laughs> uh, is to leave his post by Christmas. Um, <laughs> um, personally, I thought he should have left his post after he went to have his eyes tested um, back in Durham. But there we go. Um, he is off. Uh, I've always had a I, I have a problem with uh, the special advisors and it doesn't matter whether they're Tory, um, Labour, Liberal or whatever colour spots they are or flag they fly. I, I had a very a similar problem with them. Uh, Mr. Alistair, whatever his name was in the, uh, the when they were called spin doctors then in the Labour. I, I do worry about the power that these advisors are able to exert on government and um, <clears throat> you know they're unelected they're appointed and it's very difficult to hold them uh, for us as the public to hold them to account because they're uh, appointed by um, uh, individuals in government or parties or whatever uh, and I worry about that because obviously we can hold our um, MPs uh, to account um, uh, by the democratic system and such like um, but uh, the so-called special advisors, um, we can't. And um, uh, clearly, when you look back to what happened in the Labour government, Alistair Campbell, that was his name, and the whole issue there of weapons of mass destruction and all that episode, which was uh, uh, unfortunately not a, uh, a bit of a blot, blot on the copybook of, our, of this nation, um, an individual like that was influencing a huge amount of power on political leaders so I, I do worry about I do worry about that I'm not sure I, I don't know if I know a, another way in which that um, can be dealt with but um, uh, it's a concern I have um, anyhow I wish Mr Cummings all the best in uh, whatever field he uh, goes <coughs> goes into um, uh, but uh, but there we go so uh, as you can see, uh, the Movember is is coming on. Uh, I think this is um, so. Yes, Monday I started this, and um, so we're sort of five days in. I, I reckon probably by this time next week we we might have a full beard. Of course, my moustache is quite um, uh, full already, but uh, it's sort of coming on. I have to say. <laughs> it's very refreshing not to have to shave every morning. Um, I'm going to do a link on my own personal Facebook page uh, to the Movember charity, which supports um, men's uh, health and well-being. It's often associated with prostate cancer, but they do other things. And I was listening to the news um, this morning and they had a young man on there in his, I, I imagine he's sort of probably in his mid 20s, little bit late 20s. Um, he was a chef. Um, he's lost his job. Um, unfortunately, the support schemes that are available, he's one of those people that have fallen through the gaps. Um, and you could see the strain on this young man's um, face and in his voice. You know, um, I, I have a younger son who he, he trained to be a chef. He's worked in that industry and everything. And I was just thinking, gosh, you know, I really feel for this guy because... Um, and he'd been rationing his food, you know, he'd been eating only every other day because the um, sort of social security payment that he got <clears throat> um, with all the bills he's having to pay and everything, um, rent and such like, um, he had to ration his food. Now, for, for a chef to say that, you know, somebody, chefs are brilliant at using very small amounts of ingredients and making a meal and everything like that. So this is somebody who absolutely knows how to budget for food and to eat. But for a chef to say that um, in order to um, keep going, he had to uh, eat only every other day and that he's run up into huge debt. Now, you could see the strain on this young man and um uh you know that there, there's some real serious mental health um issues here um and uh, uh i really felt for him you know um uh i hope he's getting some support from his family as well but it's very very difficult um and um you know many of us here in handley uh um yes we're feeling the effects of the uh, uh this um, pandemic in different ways 
Um, but I know I'm, you know, I'm very lucky I'm here. I, I still have a job, though it's a bit different and we're not doing the things that we would normally do and such like. Um, <coughs> I can put food on the table. Um, you know, my wife's still teaching, Kate's still teaching. But for some people, this is this is going to be a terrible, terrible time over the next few um, weeks and months. So it's, it's really important that we, um, you know, we try and really look out for our neighbours and those in our communities who are maybe struggling. We might not be able to help them financially, but maybe we can, you know, be on the end of a phone or phone them up or just check how they are and that sort of thing. It's 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 really uh, important. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, I've said myself, you know, I, I'm lucky in the sense of um, having this role in the community. I, I you know, I'm not having to worry about being furloughed or made redundant at the moment we'll see what state the church of england is in in two years time but um i found the mental pressures quite difficult myself i'm an extrovert i um recharge by being around people um and the not to be able to sort of socialize and be with people and chat and talk uh, i've had some pretty dark weeks um and where I felt very, very low and um, and I found that um, things annoy me, um, you know, things annoy me that normally wouldn't. Um, and, uh, um, you know, I've always had a, a pretty strong <clears throat> mental health constitution. So it's given me a little bit of an insight that if I'm feeling like that with the security that I'm lucky enough to have, then lord only knows what it must be like for for some people in our country um you know i appreciate governments can't do everything um and uh, you know it's a it's a it's a tipping of scales because if they do so much now we will eventually have to pay for it so it's a, it's there is a huge balancing act but um if we can help people locally and be aware of that and those and of course as paul has rightly said um and, and please pray for them, please pray for those people, but also that sort of um, practical help. Now with that too, in a sense, one way we can help in our <clears throat> from our local community is through the Trussell Trust. Um, we're very lucky to have uh, Mike Carter, who is our sort of link person with the Trussell Trust, which is the local food bank and charity. Uh, as I mentioned, there is a basket at the back of church. The Trussell Trust are really keen to collect Christmas items now. They want to be able to make sure that they can give food parcels to those people who are struggling to um, <clears throat> to have some Christmas items in them um, to, to lift their spirits. And even though we're not going to be able to celebrate Christmas uh, as we are, <laughs> you know, I'm looking forward. <laughs> I don't know whether my waistline can cope with any more of it, but um, those things, that those special things, that we can maybe do and eat at Christmas and everything. It just helps lift the spirits. Um, that's one way in a sense we can ensure that others are, are doing this. So, you know, if you're down Lidl or wherever you shop <coughs> um, uh, and you can afford to buy an extra Christmas pudding or some extra treats or whatever, um, please do and either put them in the basket at the back of church. It's a big round basket, the church is open. And, um, or if you've, if you've got a, more food that you would like to donate and you don't want to put it up in the basket uh, if you know Mike Carter's contact details and contact him directly or if not send me a message and I will put you in touch with Mike but it's Christmas items they would really like to um, collect <coughs> also to say that the <coughs> um, we're exploring with the PCC uh, and also local charities here in Handley what we might be able to do or might be able to set up a a fund or something it's early days yet but but um, I'm pleased to say that um, <clears throat> uh, we're, we're exploring um, that option uh, one of the challenges in a sense is that for example families who are on the sort of free school meal scheme or whatever um, obviously their their details are confidential uh, and though a head teacher might know who those families are um, we have to respect that confidentiality and particularly in small villages i think that's really important because you know we we the danger is we could view people in a different way because of that um so we're going to look at what agencies <coughs> we can potentially work with in a sense to respect <coughs> those
those people's uh, confidentiality. And of course, there'll be other families who aren't necessarily linked with our first school, who've got older children or whatever, or or um, elderly people um, too. So um, we're, we're going to look into that. Um, but for now, trust will trust. Uh, and of course, um, charities have not fared particularly well um, uh, this year. We're aware of the fact that the the, the funds of the church have taken a huge hit, but other charities are. So particularly this year, you know, if you if you want to sort of give a Christmas present to a charity, charities like Crisis or Shelter, who will be working with the homeless this Christmas, um, Help the Aged um, uh, is another one uh, which will offer support to, to, to elderly people. It's worth thinking about, um, uh, about that. And maybe because we're not all going to be able to get together as a huge big family, and I know how much <laughs> those sort of family dues cost, maybe in a sense, because there might only be a, four of us or a couple of you or whatever, um, some of that money that you would have spent on that big Christmas meal, um, getting everybody around the table, maybe in a sense uh, we can um, offer that to, to help others um, over this uh, difficult winter period. Um, so yeah, uh, there we go. Now. Turning to my book of saints, uh, today is an interesting one. Uh, it's one of the ones that uh, appears <clears throat> only in the Anglican calendar. And it's uh, Charles Simeon. And some of you may have heard about the Simeon <coughs> Trust. They're patrons of quite a few uh, churches, um, the Evangelical Society. I I've worked with them myself um, on various projects and, and such like. And when I was a rural dean, in the Oxford Diocese, um, several of the churches in our deanery, I think it was about two or three, were <coughs> Simeon trustee churches. So when we were appointing new clergy to those posts, we worked with them. And I, <coughs> I have to say, um, I always found them a good bunch. Um, but uh, uh, Charles Simeon, Simeon, evangelical divine, born in Reading in um, 1759, Charles Simeon was educated at Cambridge University and spent the rest of his life in that city. He became a fellow of King's College in 80, uh, 1782 and was ordained priest the following year when he became vicar of Holy Trinity Church nearby. He had evangelical leanings as a boy, but it was whilst preparing for Holy Communion on his entrance to college that he became aware of the redeeming love of God, an experience he regarded as a turning point in his life. Many of the parishioners of Holy Trinity Church did not welcome him since he had been appointed through his own family links but his, uh, his uh, patent care and love for them all overcame their antipathy and his preaching greatly increased the congregation. Charles had uh, craved on the, had carved on the inside of the pulpit in Holy Trinity Church where only the preacher could see the words from John 12, 21, when Philip brought the Greeks to the Lord and they said, Sir, we would see Jesus. These words were a con constant reminder to him that people came not to gaze on the great preacher or to admire his eloquence, but to seek Jesus. Charles became a leading evangelical influence in the church and was one of the founders of the Church Missionary um, Society, uh, CMS as it's um, uh, called. Um, <clears throat> he also set up the Simeon Trust, which is what I mentioned, uh, which made appointments to parishes of fellow evangelicals. Uh, he remained Vicar of Holy Trinity until his death on this day in the year 1836. So we remember um, Charles Simeon um, uh, today. And um, <coughs> let's, um, uh, let's have that... Um, <coughs> uh, where is it? I've moved it about now. Uh, let's have a reading... Um, from uh, Colossians this morning, which is one of the readings set for this. A reading from Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 1, verses 3 to 8. In our prayers for you, we always thank God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love <coughs> that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Excuse me. You have heard of his, uh, this hope before in the world of truth and the gospel that has come to you. Just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. 
This you learn from Ephrathus, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to us your love in the Spirit. So some wonderful words of encouragement there <coughs> about keeping um, the faith and very important in these um, challenging times um, in, which we, uh, in which we live. Now I'm going to finish writing my article for the Downsman after this, um, which has got to be in. Uh, and of course, one of the challenges I've got is I've also got to submit the um, service pattern or service rotors to the Downsman for December and January. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, I, I really have no idea about what we are likely to be able to do or not to do. And um, speaking to other clergy in the the deanery and some of the senior staff in the diocese, we're hoping we will get some more guidance um, about worship for Christmas at the end of November or when this lockdown finishes, which is due on the 2nd of December. However, one of the problems with that is um, it gives us very little time to prepare for anything um, grand. Um, so uh, to be honest with you, brothers and sisters, I, I think we're gonna have a fairly minimal service pattern uh, for uh, December and January. Uh, hopefully lockdown would finish, so we will go back to having uh, alternate Sundays here and at Pentridge, 10 o'clock services, which will be, um, <clears throat> which will be uh, uh, broadcast live. Now, uh, um, with regard to Christmas Day and Christmas Eve, it's not going to be possible to do a carol service or Chris Dingles, though I'm going to have a discussion with the head teacher, hopefully today or next week, about how we can celebrate Chris Dingles with our young people at the school. And we might try and do something like that with the scouts so we get the older group as well. Um, so that will happen in the school, but it does mean that, um, you know, as parents and adults, we, we one of the reasons we like to come to Chris Dingle is just to see all those happy faces and the children, because that, that is really part of that Christmas spirit. And that's not going to be possible. Carol services are, aren't going to be possible. Um, <clears throat> Pentridge was looking at doing a sort of an electronic carol service where there wasn't going to be a choir or singing, but we were going to use pre-recorded music. But I, looking at things, I think that too is going to be highly unlikely. Anyhow, the plan, in a sense, for Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, um, and I, 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 somebody gave me a good idea, uh, which I think I'm going to follow through, is that on Christmas Eve, rather than having a midnight service, which is very late, and because people won't be out and about, people won't be visiting other homes, I don't think, and, uh, and things like that, is that the Christmas Eve service at Handley will be earlier. So it will be maybe at sort of six or half past six, um, uh, sort of in between when we would have done the Chris Dingle and when we would have done Midnight. Uh, and in a sense, I hope that will make it a bit more accessible. Though, of course, we will have the challenge that realistically, um, I think at an absolute push, we can probably get 40 people in the church for that service. Um, but based on the numbers that have attended in previous years, that will probably be about right. So it's. It, I think Christmas Eve, will, there won't be a midnight service, there'll be an earlier service that people will be able to attend. And then on Christmas Day, there will be a Holy Communion service um, here at uh, 10 o'clock-ish sort of time, um, and then down at Pentridge at 11.15. Um, so we hope, in a sense, that gives people an opportunity who do want to, to come to a service. It's very, very unlikely that we'll be able to sing carols or hymns or anything though of course we'll use um pre-recorded music where we can that said uh, we're not giving up in a sense trying to do something special for christmas and um i have had a chat with um uh bobby um who's the um, chair of the local wi and if you know our wi they normally put on a, a fantastic christmas pantomime it's an absolute hoot and um uh, that's down at the village hall of course they're not able to do that this year um, so I've asked Bobby uh, if she and the good ladies of the WI could help with a bit of a project, which is to really decorate the interior of Handley Church in as beautiful way as possible. We were thinking about a full size nativity, but that, that's quite complicated. So we might be putting up uh, additional Christmas trees and all sorts of things like that. Um, so with that, if people have any spare Christmas decorations that they don't use, particularly fairy lights, 
um, and uh, they would be happy to sort of donate them to the church or lend them to the church. If you lend them to the church, if you stick a sticky label on them with your name and address, then we'll make sure they get back to you after the festive season is over. We're also particularly after outdoor um, Christmas lights because I, I spoke to Rob Skip, <coughs> our scout leader, and we do have this idea, I've got this idea of trying to decorate the trees that run up from the lich gate into the church and put fairy lights and things in there so that it's got a real christmas feel to it and also maybe doing something special with the outside of the building um i do need to chat to the pcc um about this just to make sure they're um uh they're happy they might have some ideas about this but we want people to feel in the village the church will be open and the idea being that they'll see the church beautifully decorated outside and in and then you can come inside the church there will be Christmas music um, uh, playing and we hope it will just give people a bit of a festive uh, feel and they can sort of sit and be in the church and, and, and just sort of uh, reflect and think about that whole Christmas um, experience. So that's what we're looking to explore. I had a chat with the one of the church wardens from Pentridge and they're going to think along similar lines and what they can possibly do down there as well. So that's what we would like to um to try and do hopefully um, so I'm just waiting to hear back from the WI and various people as to what might be uh, might be possible anyhow that's sort of uh, it for today we're going to use the uh, I hope you've got one of these the prayer for the nation sheet the idea is really to use these at six o'clock um, but you can use them at any time so <clears throat> the prayer for today is um, Friday is the national and local governments let us pray. <clears throat> we pray for those who are in positions of authority with responsibility for decision making at national and local level at this difficult time. We ask that God would give them great wisdom, deep commitment to all and right judgment. Amen. And I'd also like to pray uh, especially for all of those who are finding themselves in um, <clears throat> isolation pray for Alex and his student cohort and pray for all students at colleges and universities who are particularly struggling and finding things difficult. Pray for the young man that we saw on, I saw on TV this morning and other young men and women like him who really feel that um, they're at their wits end with, with all of this. Uh, we pray Lord that <clears throat> you will direct us with your spirit to reach out to those who are in need to help and support them at this time uh, and we ask this in Jesus name and thinking of uh, <coughs> uh, Charles um, Simeon uh, we'll finish with the collect for him today eternal God who raised up Charles Simeon to preach the good news of Jesus Christ and inspired your people in service and mission grant that with all your church may worship the Saviour turn in sorrow from our sins and walk in the way of holiness through Jesus Christ your Son our Lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> so we're at the door of the weekend. I hope you all have a great weekend in whatever you're doing. Uh, just as I said at the beginning remember if you are going out and about you're going for a walk and you're going to park your car somewhere um, please make sure you don't leave anything in it and um, it's secure and if you're out and about walking and, and you're in those places just keep a beady eye out for anything that looks suspicious and please report it if um, if needs be um, so uh, let's just close with the grace and I hope you have a good Friday the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore amen do have a good day everybody god bless